Since I first started painting, I've been inspired by Rembrandt, but for a long time, I felt like I was just missing out on something. Like I was trying to copy him, but no matter how many different techniques I tried, I was always missing the mark. Even though some of my paintings were improving and some of them started to get a bit better, I was still just not happy with the results. I felt as if I was trapped. People were complimenting me and telling me that the paintings were improving and that they're looking really good. And a mentor of mine complimented some of the techniques that I used, but I still wasn't seeing the improvements that I had hoped for. I felt like some other painters were making better portraits, even though I was putting in more effort and what they were doing seemed quite a lot more simple. The thing I didn't quite understand is that making a compelling portrait and improving your skills is a lot like making a house. It needs to be built up in a certain progressive order, and if you miss out on some of these key foundations, you're actually going to mess up the entire rest of the structure. While I may have figured out some really great effects to use, I was skipping past more important parts of that whole construction process in order to do so. I was jumping to the final stage of the process without really having that foundation laid. It's like I had found the perfect sofa to put in the living room. The only problem was I didn't even have any concrete poured first. So while the sofa may look great by itself in the moment, all of those walls are eventually going to come crumbling in and collapse on top of it. After many struggles and many years studying painting, I was slowly able to figure out the key principles that are essential to actually building up that painting. I was finally able to use the techniques that I once admired and it completely transformed my paintings. Not only was I happier with the results, but many other people began to notice too. I started to get a lot more recognition for my paintings and people had a deeper appreciation for them. What's so frustrating about all of this is that the principles are actually quite simple. But there's one huge problem with trying to implement these keys to success. These principles are like that house that I talked about. If you lack any of these principles, then your foundation will be unstable and that house will ultimately be doomed. You may have some really great abilities, but you're not able to actually put them into practice because you lack some of these key foundations. So the first essential part of this foundation is your palette. People really struggle to understand just how important this is. If your palette isn't harmonious, if the colors are disturbing, or if you lack the understanding of how to actually use those colors, then your foundation is ultimately going to be doomed. No matter how great you are at anything else, you won't be able to build that stable house. So you may even have a really great mixture of colors on your palette, but you just lack the understanding of when, where, or how to use them. Next is the building and layering process. This is crucial if you want to make a portrait that's actually compelling. Again, many painters understand how to use particular effects that are really great, but without the understanding of how to progressively work through a painting, you won't be able to get very far. It would be like an interior designer going and building the support and foundation of the home. They may be able to make some kind of shelter and they have a general knowledge perhaps, but that house isn't going to be structurally sound. The third and final part of the process I like to call the magic. This is where the painting really starts to come to life. Unfortunately, to even get a chance at this part of the process, you need to have a good grasp on those previous stages. And to make matters worse, if you mess up at this point, you could ruin the very foundation and have to go back to fix your palette or the building process. So all of these principles sound really simple by themselves, and they may even appear really simple in a painting that you admire, but to actually implement them in a way in which they all work together is very difficult. So that's where the Rembrandt Boot Camp comes in. It's an intense workshop specifically geared towards these principles and helping you to gain these skills and use them in your own work. This workshop is not going to give you magic results overnight. I also don't intend for it to be something you just sit and watch. While it may be fun and entertaining, my goal is to get you to actually practice these principles and use them in your own work. It's three phases with 15 videos that are each focused on a specific subject. There's going to be challenges, live critiques, live Q and A's, a community group chat, and it's meant for painters who are serious about improving. So this isn't meant for anyone other than driven classical painters 
We want to make their paintings look like they're alive. If your idea of learning is relaxing while you watch Bob Ross, this might not be for you. There's a lot of great information just really packed in. So I want you to take it and go use it in your own work. That way you're going to be happy with your improvements and you're actually going to make sure you utilize and retain this information. The phases are broke down based on those key principles, the key foundations that I talked about. So phase one is based on Rembrandt's palette. I'm going to show you how to identify his colors, how to mix the same colors, and how to strategically place them in your own painting. It's also going to give you the tools to identify the appropriate colors and values that you can find in a masterwork or on a model. During phase two, we're going to look at how to actually build up a painting using sanding and scraping techniques, impasto, different types of brushwork, how to create a sense of atmosphere, and the different types of edges that you can find and you can use in your own painting to create compelling depth. All of these techniques are going to help you to create sculptural qualities in your painting, which will grip viewers because it's going to look as if it's actually three-dimensional. In phase three, we're going to actually compare your painting next to a masterwork. And you're going to learn how to actually gain information from that comparison so you can improve your painting and steal, so to speak, from the masterwork. It's also going to include the various reasons and methods for glazing, strategies and techniques to create this famous glowing effect of Rembrandt so that your skin tones feel like they actually glow. How to create focal and value structures to make your painting look even more real than the model. And what to do in the final layers to give that final punch of liveliness and vitality. So this phase is all about accentuating the depth, creating unity, harmony, and making it feel like it's actually alive. Along with all of this, I'm going to challenge you to implement this into your own work. If you really apply these principles to your own paintings, you're gonna see improvements like you've never had before. So if you're dedicated to painting and you're ready to take the leap to really push your work to the next level, then join me in this workshop through the webpage below.